Chapter 9. Kate POV. I am nervous shitless, all my entire life, I have been nothing but confident. Exams. I knew I was going to nail that crap, interviews. I knew I was going to nail that shit. With everything that was thrown my way, I always go head on for it. But somehow at this very moment, I am so nervous. I took a deep breath and looked at our intertwined hands. It's showtime. I didn't realize that I said it out loud until I heard Riley chuckle. I gave him a glare and he faked coughed. He opened the door and an elderly woman walked towards us. Ray Ray, I missed you. Her smile was so bright and full of life. Esther, I was just here a few days ago. He said, kissing the woman on her cheeks. Esther, this is my wife, Catherine, honey, and this is my nanny Esther. He introduced us. I smiled at the lady and she bought me into a bone-crushing hug. Lord, your mother was right. She is definitely a beauty, Riley, you did well. She said holding my hand smiling from ear to ear. Come in, everyone is waiting for you guys inside. She stepped aside and Riley and I got inside the house. Where is everyone seated nanny? Riley asked the nanny. He pulled me to him and sniffed my hair. The nanny smiled at his reaction. Ah uh, yes, they are in the family room, it was nice to meet you, Catherine. She smiled at me. Please call me Kate, Esther, and the pleasure is all mine. I answered and smiled at her. She nodded. Riley guided me to where the family room is. His hand was on my lower back and I couldn't help but shiver at the goosebumps I felt. He opened the family room and need I say it was packed with people. Fuck shit. All heads turned towards us and his mother got up from her seat and rushed to us. Kate, you finally made it. She gave me a tight hug. I couldn't even utter a single word since I couldn't breathe. I swear I was blue from lack of oxygen. She let go of me and that is when I found my voice. Nice to see you again, Mrs. Fox. I smiled at her. She weaved her hands in the air and said, Oh please child, I told you to call me mom. Yes, please forgive me, mom. She pulled me with her, but Riley's grip on my waist was too tight. Hello, mother. He greeted his mother. Oh. Hi, son. Riley rolled his eyes. Now let go of my daughter. I want to introduce her to everyone. She slapped her son's hand that was on my waist and pulled me to the people that were staring at me. Kate, you already met Thomas, my husband. She looked at me with beaming eyes. I nodded towards Mr. Fox and said, Yes, I did. Nice to see you again, Dad. Hello, Kate. He greeted with a smile. Now let me introduce you to everyone else. Mrs. Fox pulled me to a couple that looks to be in their late fifties. This is my sister-in-law Susan Davis and her husband Jameson Davis. Susan is Thomas's elder sister. She smiled at the couple and looked at me with the same bright smile, but mine was filled with so much love and adoration. James, Susan, this is Catherine, Riley's wife, and my daughter-in-law. She clapped her hands together with a squeal. Mr. Davis laughed together with his wife. He extended his hand for a handshake. Nice to meet you, Catherine. He said. Pleasure is all mine. Sir, I smiled back at him. No, 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 child, you call him uncle like Riley and your siblings call him. My mother-in-law said, shaking her head. Give it time, Jenny, she will get used to it. Mrs. Davis said, rolling her eyes at her sister-in-law. She looked at me and smiled also. Hi, Catherine, I am the fun end that will be helping you to beat up your husband if he misbehaves. She kissed my cheeks and hugged me. Really, Susie? You just going to put it out there on the first meeting, that you assist her to beat me? Said my so-called husband, behind me. I looked at him and he was standing next to his father both smirking. Yes, Ray, I will help her like I helped your mother with your father. Susan and Riley's mom let out a laugh. I can really see that the two ladies get along so fine. Sweetie let me introduce you to your siblings now. She pulled me again. This is Christian. Riley's young brother. 
Christian has the same gray eyes as his father unlike his brother with greenish eyes like his mother. Ian, this is your sister, Catherine. Dr. Catherine Brown, I read your article once at college about the thriving and emerging markets. He extended his hand for a shake. Damn, that was my first ever paper that I had to release without my name coming second or third. Nice to meet you Christian, and please call me Kate, and thank you for reading my paper. I took his hand and shook it. Wait, you are the same tribe. Catherine Brown, they released the economic impact of climate change just yesterday on Business Times. Ask someone I haven't been introduced to just beside Christian, but by the looks. I can definitely tell that he is Susan's son because they look alike just that he has manly features. I nodded and was about to answer when someone beat me to it. Yes, yes she is. I looked behind me and saw Riley grinning. Wow, I never thought I would get a chance to ever meet you. Said the same guy. Riley came and stand next to me. Well today is your lucky day cousin. Not only will you shake her hand, but you will dine with her. He said still plastered with the same grin. Kate, this is Susan's son Alexander. Riley's mom finally introduced me. The name sound familiar, but I just couldn't remember where I heard it from. I shook his hand, but didn't last since it was snatched very quickly by Riley. Okay. Alexander smirked at him and gave me a wink. This is Alexander's wife Bernadette. I looked at the lady who can be if not five but six months pregnant. She is so beautiful with tan skin and ash brown hair. We both greeted each other. A door opened and in walked a girl that could be 17 if my guess is correct. She squeals Riley's name and ran to him and gave him a hug. So where is she? I heard that I have a big sister. Oh God, help me now. Riley looked at me and smiled. The girl followed his eyes and she let go of him and came and gave me a bone-crushing hug. She was giggling like Nessa when she had too much sweet stuff. Hi, I am Aquamarine, but everyone calls me Aqua. She introduced herself. Beat her mother to it, she has the same energy as her mother though. Hi, Aquamarine, but everyone calls me Aqua. I am Catherine, but everyone calls me Kate. I smiled at her and everyone laughed at how I introduced myself to her. Once I was introduced to everyone and told that others couldn't make it and promised to come next time, Mrs. Davis and Mrs. Fox bombarded me with questions after questions, inviting me to tea parties and charity events. Soon the maid came and told us that dinner is ready. Riley POV I looked at my family and how easily they were getting along with my little kitten. Aqua wasn't even leaving her side at all. Once the maid called us that dinner is ready, we all went to the dining room and took our respective seats, with my dad on the head table and my mom next to him, Kate's seat next to me and I couldn't be happier. Food was placed on the table and once Aunt Susan was done blessing the food, her daughter-in-law was the first one to fill her plate with literally everything that was on the table. So, Kate, what really made you go for econ? Asked Alex once we all fixed our own plates. Kate took a sip from her water and wiped her mouth with a napkin and looked at my brother. I don't really know, I just called it a calling till this day, but I guess I could say I enjoy working with numbers, analytics, and solving problems. She shrugged her shoulders. Eh, uh, that's fair. And what made you marry this scumbag of a cousin of mine? Alex voiced out again. I couldn't help but choke on my food. Fuck him! Lucky for me that I have a wife now. She simply gave me water and pats my back. I looked at my mother and saw her face slide up by Kate's doing. You okay? Kate asked me not taking her hand from my back. Yes love, I am okay now. I gave her a smile and she smiled back and looked at my idiot of a cousin. I swear if he wasn't older than me he will be long dead. Well we decided to be spontaneous and leave at the moment. And not wait for three to five years before we get married. I mean we met and it was love at first sight so why not seal the deal? She took a sip from her glass and I looked at everyone on the table and the ladies were just smiling and my mom had tears in her eyes. Such a drama queen. Mom, why are you crying now? I asked her. I don't know, I am just happy that you finally found love and you won't be a grumpy old man. 
She wiped her tears and took a moment to herself. Okay, that nice and cheesy, but I am glad that my baby brother is finally settled. Alex answered Kate. Alex is two years older than me and is running his father's ECM engineering consulting company. The guy is my Obi-Wan Kenobi. When dad gave me the role of CEO, I kept on doubting myself, but it was he and my dad that believed in me. But, you two still owe us a wedding though, and I won't rest until I get to see you in a white dress, Kate. Mom said, Mom, really? Yes, Riley, that is why I asked Esther to prepare your bedroom. You and Kate are moving in with us as it's supposed to be. The daughter-in-law must stay at least a month if not forever with her in-laws. My mother said looking at Kate and me. This time around it was my wife who choked on her water, and I repeated her gesture by patting her back and asking if she was all right. I looked at my dad and he just shrugged his shoulders. Don't look at your father, Riley, and both of you tell us when will you guys be moving in, and I hope it's tomorrow. She glared at my wife and me. Kate cleared her throat and shook her head. Sorry mom, but not tomorrow. I have to go away for a workshop this coming weekend and need to pack for that. That's okay sweetheart. Just tell Rosina to pack yours and Riley stuff, and once you come back from your workshop you can just come straight here or better yet. You can pack tonight and come here tomorrow, and when you leave for your workshop you will just leave knowing that you have settled well here. Wow, my mother won't let go of this matter. We were done with dinner and we were bidding farewell to everyone, since everything is settled that I will be moving back in with my parents. But the only thing that is different is that I will be living with Kate under the same roof and room, so I can just say it's a lose-win situation. We drove in silence until I reached her apartment. I guess, I will come and help you pack tomorrow? No need to worry about that. I will be okay, we'll just leave early from work and finish packing. She answered giving me a faint smile. I gave her a nod and got out of the driver's side, and walked to her side, and opened the door for her. Let me walk you to your apartment. I placed my hand on her lower back and walked with her. We took the stairs to her place. I am actually glad that she took the stairs because I just love how my hand is resting on her back. She took out her keys from her small bag and she was about to unlock her door but I stopped her. Let me do it, I said as I took her apartment keys. I opened the door and got inside with her. She switched on the light and her place was full of boxes like she already knew that she has to move. Wow, it's like you already knew that you have to move. I am moving actually, I was supposed to get an apartment close to campus, but my application was rejected so now, I am moving in with my friends until the annulment is filed and I can apply again for another place of my own. I really need to work on winning her heart and make her forget this annulment thing. Okay, at least now you will be staying with me. She eyed me and I cleared my throat. I mean with my family, I said and looked anyway but not in her eyes. Yeah, I guess. I will just call Nessa and tell her that I will just use the spare room they gave me to store my stuff. She replied. No, they will go to my house for now. Just take the ones you will need and I will come and get them tomorrow and ask Henry to take the ones you won't need to my house. I answered her. I don't want her stuff to go anyway, but my house. I just want my wife and her belonging closer to me. Even though she is talking about an omen but right now is to win her heart and have her forever and keep her beside me at all times. She already captured my heart the moment I saw her walked into that VVIP room at Jason's club and I am not going to let her go not now not ever. You don't have to do that, you know? She bought me back from my thoughts. I know, but I want to. This is the least I can do after what you have done for me. I smiled at her and she smiled back. Chapter 11 Kate POV it's been a week since I moved in with the fox, and as promised Riley came the following day with Henry, whom I learned is his personal driver and right-hand man. He is in his forties and he is such a nice man. That night after Riley left I called Vanessa and tell her everything that has happened and the girl was just happy and couldn't stop with her happy giggles. At least she wasn't pissed about the fact that I won't be staying with her and Max. I went to the workshop and spent a weekend there learning techniques and strategies of how to teach my students and how to approach a lesson plan. I must be truthful though. My plan was to skip this workshop but I am sure glad that I did attend it because I got to learn so much stuff and got to know a lot of other lectures in my field. Like the legendary Professor Paul Novak. 
He is one of the few economists that made a mark on the economy and is currently the Minister of Education. And one can never forget my old professor, Professor Johann Meritz. If I could talk about this man I will talk the whole day. Now he was so pleased to see me as one of the lectures and couldn't stop praising me for how proud he is of me. He even said that he used one of my recent articles as his assignment for his student back at home. I can't tell you how happy and proud I feel at that moment. When the weekend was over and it was time for us to go back home, I found Riley waiting for me outside the lodge I was staying at. He stood with all his glory wearing ripped jeans blue and a white golf shirt with dark shades. He looks yummier than he was at the club. That night he looked so lonely and bored. Now as I look at him, he looks livelier and happy. I think. God he was so dreamy typing something on his phone. As soon as he was done he tossed the phone on his car seat and my phone ding indicating that I have a message. I took out my phone and saw that the message was from him. Waiting for you outside Han. Your husband. I read the message and I couldn't help but smile. Maybe Nessa is right. I should just give the guy and this marriage a chance and see where it leads. I mean it isn't anyone's fault that the city hall's glitch chose us to make us cross paths. Now, Riley and I came up with sleeping arrangements the first night we moved in with his parents. But that didn't go all well when his mother and sister walked into our bedroom and almost got Riley taking his pillow to go and sleep on the couch. We ended up sleeping together on top of the bed. Today it's Friday and my students have a presentation and I have a guest lecture. But it's not one of my colleagues, but Terence Heron, a lecturer from Los Angeles City College. He's one of the lecturers I made friends with at the workshop. I am just glad that he agreed to come and be present and be my guest, even though I have to pay with gracing myself and teach his class one of the macroeconomics chapters. My roommate aka my husband walked out of the bathroom with a towel hanging low on, his torso with water dripping from his chest going straight to the forbidden treasure. My goodness Kate, get a hold of yourself. I shook my head and got up from the bed. Good morning. He greeted me. One thing about him, he wakes up early and hits the gym, and comes back and takes his shower. The guy is literally and figuratively my alarm, like I don't need to set any alarm because of him and get up early. Morning, I said making the bed. I never find mornings good that's why I never add the you to there. He walked to the closet and I walked to the washroom and did my business. I normally pictured staying with a guy being messy and never clean after themselves, but Riley is super clean and neat. Everything that he does is to the top notch clean. Even my own brothers are not this clean at all while well, my big brother is super clean, but his line of work require him to be. As soon as I was done using the bathroom I walked out with a towel only to find him seated on the edge of the bed with his phone too focused to recognize my presence. I walked to the closet and changed for the day. I took out my black pencil skirt and a blouse with a black blazer. My blazer is a quarter sleeves. I wore my nude 5 inch heels and looked at myself in the mirror and as soon as I was satisfied with and the little makeup I did. I put on my clear lip balm and walked out, and that's when he took out his eyes from his phone and looked at me. Will you be busy during lunchtime? I asked him. Not really. I mean I have back-to-back -back meetings now in the morning but around lunch, I will be free. What's up? He stood up and that's when I got to see him perfectly. He is wearing a navy blue three-piece suit with a white shirt and ombre brown Italian leather shoes. Okay, I guess I will pick you up for lunch then. He took my bags and his office bag also and opened the door for me. We walked down the stairs to the dining room to have breakfast with his family. Good morning, Mr. And Dr. Fox. Christian greeted us as soon as he noticed us walking into the dining room. Riley rolled his eyes and at him. Morning, Chris. I greeted him and he just smirked at me. Morning, Dad. Mom, I looked around the table and saw that Aqua was in no way in sight. Where is Aqua? Riley asked the question I was about to ask. Right behind you, big brother. We turned and saw Aqua standing there with her backpack. She walked to me and gave me a hug and kissed her brother on his cheek and walked to her parents and another brother to kiss them. 
Riley pulls out the chair for me and I took my seat and he took his also. Kate, did you talk to your mother about the date of the wedding? Asked Jenny. I told my mom everything about the glitch the day I went to the workshop, and to my surprise, she knew about it saying that Nessa told her that I am married. That noisy attorney never learns her place. I told her not to tell the whole family yet since I am in no mood to deal with my mother's family. Especially since Riley and I have to sign the annulment. But like my best friend my mother also wishes for me to give this wedding a try since she has been fixing me up with doctors after doctors from where she works. Not yet, but I will this coming weekend. She has been working night shifts that I couldn't call her during the day since she is sleeping at that time. Jenny nodded at what I said. Once we were done with breakfast, everyone went to their respective activity for the day. Riley was about to get in his car with my bags. I am taking my car today. I am going to come back home early since it's Friday. I told him and he looked at me confused. Okay, but Henry can pick you up and bring you home once you're done. Yeah, but I am meeting up with Nessa also. He just nodded and took my bags to his Mercedes AMG C63 that is matte black. Hey, I am taking my Audi. Why are you putting my bags in there? Well, it's this or I'm driving you to walk, sweetheart. Feeling defeated, I walked inside the car and Henry gave me car keys, smiling at me. I drove to work. Well, this beast is alive. Don't hate me, I love big cars. I got to work and started with my day. Since my classes today start immediately after lunch, I have some time to do some marking on assignments. My phone dings indicating that I have a message. Don't forget my lunch with yours truly, babe. It was from Vanessa. Yeah, picking him up 30 minutes before 12 babes. I replied to the text and went on with my work. Chapter 12, Riley POV. Things have been perfect this past week. Even though my wife doesn't talk much with me, but we still have our own conversation. It actually helps that we both talk about similar things when it comes to the business world. I told myself that during lunch I am going to ask her to give me a chance and our marriage a chance. Waking up next to her is total bliss and how she and my family get along so fine is a sight to see. She and my father are always in deep conversation with regard to the economy and inflation and just three days ago, my dad was busy helping her with her paper that she is apparently working on. I felt jealous wanting to be in my father's shoes at that very moment. Today on my way to work was so silent and I felt so alone. I really enjoyed dropping her off at campus and picking her up, but felt better and smiled knowing that I will see her around lunch. Bella if I have anything around lunch cancel it for me. I said the moment I saw my personal assistant at her station. Yes sir. I walked into my office and started reviewing the reports until my first meeting was only left with five minutes to start. This meeting is actually with the promising investor and it took me forever to bring him on board. Mr. Thompson is old school and only works with family men. I walked to the boardroom and saw that he has two men and a woman with him. Mr. Thompson, thank you for agreeing to this meeting. We shook hands. Mr. Fox. He greeted back. This is my daughter Cecilia, she is currently my PA, and my son Noah the Vice President, and the MD Mr. Coyle. He introduces me to the people he came with and I shook hands with them and introduced them to the people I was with. I just didn't like the fact that his daughter took forever to let go of my hand and I just felt disgusted and took my hand clearing my throat and took my seat and everyone else followed me. The meeting was still on and the old man and I were not reaching the agreement that we both find pleasing to both companies when I received the text. Don't forget our lunch, Kate. I smiled at the text and replied to it. Didn't forget love, your husband asterisk asterisk. This endearment comes naturally for me and she always blushes when I use them on her. Didn't notice that I was in my little world until Mr. Thompson calls out my name. Mr. Fox are you with us? He asked. Yes, please forgive me. I was just replying to my wife's text message. I looked at him and saw that he has a confused look and his daughter had an angry look. That's right, slut. I am very much married. I didn't know that you were married, Mr. Thompson said still with a confused expression. Yes, we just signed papers and haven't had a ceremony yet. My mother is busy planning the whole thing though. 
I smiled thinking of how mom is pressuring us to get married. Well, congratulations son, marriage is a blessing, the old man said smiling. Thank you, sir. After the meeting went on and we came up with a conclusion that we will be meeting up next week with final work. Oh, Mr. Fox, you and your wife wouldn't mind having dinner with Mrs. Thompson and I would you? The old man asked standing up from his chair. Not at all sir, just name the time and place and we will be there. I answered him. How about tonight at 7 p.m. at 71 above? He asked and I just nodded at him. I showed him and his people out towards the elevator and as soon as it was closed I walked back to my office to attend a conference call with China. It's now 11.30 when my wife texts me. Two minute to the company. I gathered my stuff and replied to her text. You will find me by the lobby love. I got to the lobby when a goddess walked through. She walked to the receptionist and asked for my office and saw that trash gave my wife a stinky attitude. I walked to her. Hey love. I greeted her and gave her a peck in front of the receptionist and everyone that was around the lobby. She blushed by my sudden act. Ready to go? I asked her and she just nodded her head and I took her hand and walked out of the building. Give me the keys, I said as soon as we were in front of her car. Nope, I am driving. She smiled and walked to the driver's seat and got it and I followed. So, where are we having our lunch? Catch. She answered while concentrating on the road. I remember that Mr. Thompson asked me to join him and his wife for dinner. You busy tonight? Not really. Why do you ask? Mind coming with me to meet up with a possible client of mine and his wife for dinner around 7 in the evening? Sure. Who is the client? She asked as she was pulling over in front of the restaurant. Mr. Thompson. Okay. No problem. Oh. We are here. Send my love to Nessa for me. Take the cab back to the office. I have to go back to campus. I have a guest that will be arriving soon. She said starting the engine again. Wait, we not having lunch together? I asked her and she just shook her head. Nope, you having lunch with Vanessa. The reservation is under Dr. Brown. She said and I just got out of the car and was about to close the door when I heard her say. Good luck. Chapter 13 Vanessa POV. The day Kate walked into my office and told me that she was married, I couldn't help but laugh my eyes out. I honestly thought that it was one of her way of wanting to spend time with me. But as soon as I stopped laughing and I saw her not laughing with me that's when I knew girl is not kidding. I accompanied her to City Hall to find out what happened and yep, the agent wasn't lying when she said that my best friend was married. And not to an old man as Kate was saying, but to L.A.'s playboy and business god, as Max always calls him. It's been a week since she moved in with Riley and his family, and I must say that I am impressed with how things are working out for her. Kate deserves to be happy after everything she has been through and not having her luck on love at all. I told her mom about her been married, and she was excited, but that excitement died the moment I told her that she is applying for an annulment. She made me promise her that I will make sure that the two stay married to each other until they fell for each other. That is why I pulled Kate's old time trick of getting to know the guy I am dating. When I started dating Max, she requested that she meet up with him on a lunch or dinner, and she and Max went on dinner together. That's where they became sole siblings. Now I also pulled the same thing, but I couldn't say dinner because Max will kill me if I go on a dinner date with anyone but him. Typical, possessive fiancé. Why don't we do a double date with them, instead of you going to meet with him all by yourself? My lord help me right now. This man has been asking this question since last night and this morning on our way to work and my answer has been the same but he still keep on asking it till this very hour. Honey, I told you, I have to meet him with all by myself to see if he is good for Kate. We can do that double date tomorrow, but not today. I answered him taking his car keys and my purse and cell phone. Okay, fine. Just make sure you ask him the right questions that I will have asked. He said, getting up from his chair. And what are those questions? I glare at him through my reading glasses. Well, questions like, what are his intentions and if he's planning to sign the annulment or not, and if he will be signing it or not, and most importantly not to hurt Kate, because I honestly don't want to deal with you and Kate's tears. I giggled and pecked his lips. Don't worry I got this. 
I will ask him and everything that you said and more. I am not a lawyer by mistake and besides, I learn from the best. I said kissing him for the last time, and walked out of his office and went to the parking lot. On my way to the restaurant, babe, I don't want to wait for your husband. I sent Kate a text and got in my car and drove to the restaurant. I heard my phone ding and didn't check it knowing that it's Kate responding to my text or Max telling me how much he misses me already. As soon as I parked the car in front of the restaurant I read the text which was from Kate. On my way to pick him up. I walked inside the restaurant and asked for reservation under DR. Brown at the reception and a waiter came and escorted me to my table. As soon as I was seated I got another text from Kate. Just drop him off. Good luck. If I know her better, she didn't tell the poor guy that he will be having lunch with me, but not her. Would you like anything to drink, ma'am? Asked the waiter. I am sorry. May I please have some lemon water with ice while I still wait for my guest? Of cause. He nodded and left. I responded to Kate's text by sending kissing emojis. When I look up, I found Riley walking to my table. Vanessa. He asked the moment he stood in front of our table. I nodded and show him a seat in front of me. Yes, and you are the husband. Please take a seat. The waiter came with my water and greeted Riley. By your frown, I am guessing that she didn't tell you that you meeting up with me. I gave him a smile and he returned it. We ordered our lunch and started with our own conversation and got to learn quite a lot about him and saw that he is actually a nice guy and that he is a perfect match for Miss Goody Two Shoes. So, when are you guys filing the annulment? I asked him. He cleared his throat and took a sip from his red wine. Call me selfish, Vanessa, but I don't want to sign it. He sighed and put his glass back on the table. I mean, I know it's a glitch, but I feel like this was meant to happen and right now I just want to win your friend's heart. Am I wrong to want more from her and not want to sign those papers? He asked again and I just smiled at him. You like her, don't you? I asked him. Since the very moment she walked on that I mean office with that pile of papers. He took another glass of his wine and looked at me. Okay, I will help you win her heart, but if you break her heart, I will be coming for you. I said in a threatening tone. I got a text and looked at it and saw that it's from my assistant. Shit! I cursed and he looked at me and asked. Is everything all right? Yeah. We have been sitting here for more than two hours now and I have a client waiting for me at the office. I see. I guess our lunch date will end here then. He smiled at me and I nodded. Come on. I will give you a ride back to your office. You don't need to worry about me. I will just call my driver or take Uber. He said shaking his head. Nonsense. I am dropping you off and that's final. I said getting my stuff and got up from my chair. Okay, let me pay the bill then. He said and took out his wallet. No need for that. Kate already took care of everything. It's her treat. He nodded and got up from his chair and we both walked out. I drove him to his company. Oh, I will see you tomorrow morning. Do remind your wife that she needs to get there early or she will be my slave for the remaining of this year. What's happening tomorrow? He asked confused. Gosh, Kate never learn. I sighed and looked at him and said we going to check out the possible churches that I want to book for the wedding and afterward have late lunch if not early dinner. Oh, okay, I guess I will see you then. Thank you for lunch. He opened his door and got off. Sure thing brother and remember hurt her and I will kill you. He let out a laugh and said, We'll die before I do that. He closed the door and I took off towards my office. Chapter 14 Riley POV Lunch with Vanessa was great, even though I really wished it was with the wife, but at least I got to learn more about her from her closest friend. Once I got back from lunch I continued to do my work, I had to review some of the reports of the company's recent projects. The sound of my phone notification distracted me from my work. Drinks tonight Fox? I hardly see you since you got married man. It's from Chris. I haven't seen him since Kate and I moved to my parents house and to tell the truth I don't even miss the nightlife at all. I prefer been home with my wife and look at her interact with my family or she and I be in our bedroom working than being at a club. Hey man, sorry can't make it tonight, meeting up with a client together with Kate. 
I put my phone away as soon as I was done texting him and look at the report. My intercom started to ring. Yes, Bella? I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Fox, but Mr. Lewis is on line too and would like to have a word with you. Put him through. My office phone rang twice before I answer. Yes, Chris. So now that you married, you don't have time for your best friend? I rolled my eyes at his question. This guy can be really dramatic when he wants to. Dude, it's not like that. I have been busy and trying to get to know Kate and now that she and I are staying with my parents, we have been trying to adjust. Wait, you two are staying together? I signed. Yeah, for a week now. Dan Fox, so when am I meeting Mrs. Riley Fox? It's actually Dr. Riley Fox, and I don't know because tomorrow I am meeting up with her friends. How about next week or this coming Sunday? Come by my parents' place for Sunday lunch? Hmm, I can never say no to your mother's Sunday dishes. We'll see you then, man. Sure, man. As soon as I ended the call with Chris, I continued with my work and it was now time for me to leave and prepare for dinner with Mr. Thompson. Kate POV After dropping of Riley, I drove back to campus and start to prepare for Terrence's arrival. I am so excited that he agreed on doing this. I mean my students are straight out of high school and they are new to this and really need guides. As soon as I parked my car, I received a call from Terrence. Hey, Terrence, are you here already? Hi Kate, you're waiting at your department reception. Okay, I'm on my way. Give me five. I got off my car and walked to the reception. Mr. Heron, thank you so much for coming. I walk to him and shake hands with him. It's a pleasure drive. Bran, glad I can help. I gave him a smile and motion for him to follow me. I just need to take scripts from my office and then we can go to class. He nodded and go into my office with me. We walked to the auditorium together and found students already seated the doors were closed and Terence was busy looking at the topics given to students and I was handing out the pop quiz scripts. Once I was done I was about to introduce the guest when the doors opened. Mr. Showman, you late, take your seat before I decide otherwise. He rushed and took his seat and I gave the student that was in front showman's script to pass it to him. Miss Evans passed Mr. Showman's script for me will you? She nodded and gave it to the student behind her. I know I am that type of a lecture. I prefer to know my students than to call them a you. Since everyone got their pop quiz script I believe we can all just start now. But before we start allow me to introduce to you our guest today. This is Mr. Terrence Heron from Los Angeles City College and he lectures freshmen. Year students like yourselves and also second years. The presentation started and every group presented their topics and Terence gave them his feedback and in conclusion, he gave them tips on how to approach certain topics and the students asked him questions afterward. He also gave them tips on how to study for econ and other modules. Two hours later the class ended and we were done and decided to take Terence out on a brunch to thank him. We had our chit chat about anything and everything. It was now 4 p.m. when we were done and we were going our separate ways. I was about to open my car, or rather Riley's car, when someone spoke behind me. Excuse me, that's my friend's car. I looked behind me and saw a blonde guy and he looked quite familiar but I just don't remember where I saw him. Oh crap, it's you. Damn, Riley wasn't kidding when he said you are beautiful. He smiled and walked closer to me. Hi, I am Chris Lewis and you are my sister-in-law, beautiful. He took my hand and shook it. Hi, Dr. Catherine Brown. I introduced myself. Even your voice is sweet as heaven. I giggled at his words. Thank you. Would you like me to treat you for coffee? He asked looking at his watch. No thank you, Mr. Lewis. He interrupted me. No sister-in-law, call me Chris, you making me old by calling me that. I laughed and nodded. Okay, Chris, perhaps some other time. I just had one and I am running late for my next appointment. 
You and your husband and appointments. He shook his head. Okay, then sister-in-law some other time. I am even shocked that he let you drive his newborn child. He said looking at the car with amusement. Damn, my boy is whipped. He muttered looking at me and smiled. Let me not keep you, sister-in-law. He kissed my cheek and walked away and I got in the car and drove to the Fox Mansion. Third Person POV Kate got to her in-law's mansion just after 30 minutes and went straight to her room as soon as she greeted the elders. She changed to her comfortable clothes and relaxed for a few minutes before heading to the bathroom to take a shower, remembering that Riley and she have to meet up with his clients. She got into the shower and let warm water hit her fair skin for a moment and relax her muscles. After taking a well-deserved moment she scrubbed her skin and walked out of the shower once done. Kate looked around for a towel and noticed that she didn't come with one when coming to take bath. She decided to look around the drawers to see if there's no spare but nothing was there. Took Riley's gown that was hanging by the door and wore it and walked out of the bathroom. The moment she stepped out of the bathroom and closed the bathroom door, Riley walked in. He looked at the beauty that was wearing his gown with mesmerized gaze and found himself lost and checking out his wife. Riley. Kate called him and it was then that he realized that he was eye-raping his wife. He cleared his throat and looked anyway, but the sexy model slash professor in front of him. I am sorry, were you saying something? Kate rolled her eyes and muttered a perv under her breath. Yes, I was asking, how was lunch with Vanessa? It was Korea. She is actually a nice woman. Hmm. She was about to walk to the closets when he asked her. Why didn't you tell me that I'm having lunch with her, not you? I forgot and beside you did enjoy and Nessa gave me the reviews of your lunch. So take it as you and I had lunch together, hubby. She answered him and walked to the closet leaving the man behind and frustrated. Riley was many things and he never felt helpless as Kate was making him feel. He so wished that he could have lunch with her today so that he can actually propose to her but she just fixed a lunch date with her best friend, not her. Riley also walked to the bathroom and took his shower. The coupled walked down the stairs hand in hand. Kate was wearing a cherry red cascade wrap dress and matched it with nude five inch stilettos with red bottoms and concluded her outfit with a beige double breast trench coat. She kept her makeup to neutral and her hair was on a high and sleek ponytail. Riley was no different from the brunette next to him either. He was wearing a gray two-piece suit that has dark red bottoms that fit his wife's dress. The suit was plaid doubled breasted. He was wearing black shiny formal shoes. What made the outfit special for Riley was that it was actually selected by his wife and he couldn't feel proud that his wife has style. Riley's coat was black in color. The moment they were about three steps to reach the ground floor, the two heard some whistle coming from behind them and saw that it was Christian. Damn sis, you look finny. Kate blushed and turned to walk away but Christian stopped her. Wait, stand right there. Let me take a picture of this very moment. Christian ran to the last step and took out his phone and took pictures of the couple. Kate and Riley been the best and posing gave him a show worth watching. The maids were even looking at them, admiring their young master and lady posing for Christian. Where are you to going looking so ravishing? Jenny asked as soon as she walked out of the dining room. Her husband and daughter followed her as soon as she finished her words. Kate was startled by her voice and her reflex caused her to hit Riley's chest. Riley laughed at her and moved his hand to her back. We having dinner with Mr. Thompson and his wife. Sorry we won't be joining you guys tonight. Riley answered his mother while still holding his little wife. Oh, that's okay. As long as you promise to take care of my daughter then it's fine with me son. Jenny smiled at her son. The couple got to 71 above and was escorted to the old couple's table. As soon as Kate saw the woman seated on the table the waiter was leading them to she called out her name. Mary! The woman took her eyes from her husband and looked at the young woman in front of them. Dr. Brown! Mary stood up and hugged Catherine. 
Mary was in her early fifties and had a short pixie cut that is black in color. What a lovely surprise! Mary said as soon as she let Kate go from a warm embrace. It is indeed and I told you plenty of times to call me Kate, not Dr. Brown. Kate smiled at the lady. I am sorry child, old habits. Anyway, this is my husband Ivan. She looked at her husband and the man who was already up from his chair smiled at his wife. Honey this is the young lady I was telling you about, that loves to assist at the orphanage and is a generous donor there as well. Dr. Catherine Brown. Kate shook Mr. Thompson's hand and looked behind her giving her husband the best smile ever. Once she let go of Mr. Thompson's hand she introduced Riley. This is my husband Riley Fox. She looked at Mary and her husband. Wait what? You married and didn't invite the kids and me to your wedding? Mary asked astonished. Kate blushed. Riley shook Mr. Thompson's hand and laughed at Mrs. Thompson's words. We only signed the marriage certificate ma'am, but we are busy planning the wedding right now. Riley answered Mrs. Thompson. You young generation do things different than us. Mr. Thompson comment as they took their seat. What are you talking about Ivan? Did you forget that we eloped? Mary asked her husband with a glare. The young couple laughed looking at the old couple glaring at each other. Riley's son, learn from me if she bosses you around before you two reach a year, put your foot down. Ivan said in a whisper but both ladies heard him loud and clear. Don't forget to also tell him what happened when your foot was down. Mary retorted. Ivan looked at his wife and pouted. Kate and Riley laughed again. I am sorry Mr. Thompson, but I am actually scared of my wife, so I won't be putting my foot down anytime soon. Riley said looking at his wife dreamily. Kate couldn't help but melted how Riley looked at her. The four had their dinner and the men discussed more business and Mr. Thompson looked quite impressed by the young man in front of him. Riley reminded him of himself young and enthusiastic. He promised to do business with him. Chapter 16. Kate POV. The drive back home was quiet. We both were just on our own thoughts. Riley kept on gazing at me like someone who wanted to say something but didn't say anything. If I'm being honest here, I love how when he touches me I get sparks and how when he sends me his fuckboy grin I just go all high school musical or when we around his parents and he calls me honey, love, sweetheart, or kitten damn I just go crazy and my stomach starts to bloom with endless butterflies. I haven't even thought of the annulment that he and I have to sign because the guy has been teasing me with his devilish abs every morning and keeps on distracting me. I swear the only time I get to think straight and not think about him is when I am lecturing other than that my mind is occupied by my eye glitch accidental husband. Hey, we are here. I looked outside and saw that we are inside the mansion garage. How did I just zone out like that? I looked at Riley and saw him staring at me. Hmm. I hummed and he got out of the car and walked to my side and opened the door for me. Lord if you love me. Please do not tell me that I have fallen for this man. He extended his hand for me and I took it and got out of the car. Boy am I glad that tomorrow it's actually Saturday I can just sleep and wake up late for the first time in three weeks, I said yawning. Riley let out a chuckle and opened the garage door that leads inside the house. Don't forget that we meeting with your friends tomorrow, he said shaking his head. Crap, I forgot about those two. I bit my lower lip and the next thing I know is that Riley's lips and mine were molded together. The kiss didn't last long since we heard someone clearing their throat, only to find out that it's his father. I have never felt this embarrassed in my entire well-being. I even hid my face on my husband's chest and the guy being a sellout laughed at my dismay. As soon as I gathered enough strength to face the audience I looked at them and said I'm going to make tea. I pointed towards the kitchen and Riley and his dad laughed at my red face. Please make some for me too, love. Me to daughter. Riley and his father said still laughing behind my retreating back. I got inside the kitchen and found Nellie the young maid. Hey, Nell. Madam Kate? She nodded at me. 
What are you doing in here so late? Oh, I just finished washing the dishes. She followed my gaze and saw me taking the kettle and pour in water. Would you like any help with that? No, thank you. I will manage. You can go and rest I got this. I told her as I was busy taking out tea sets from the cupboard. She was about to walk out when she stopped. Madam Kate, would you mind if I ask you something? Not at all. What's up? I asked facing her this time around and she looked a little bit hesitant. Well, it's nothing major. It's just I heard from Esther saying that you are a professor at university and I was wondering if you could assist me with the... She said the last part in a whisper. I didn't know that you want to go to school, Nellie. Well, to tell the truth, I haven't known them longer. Nellie just blushed and looked down. So what do you want to study? I don't know, maybe something in business or elementary teacher. Nellie was about to answer, but she kept quiet and looked down. I was about to ask her when my unasked question was answered by a hand that was wrapped on my waist. By the butterflies that are busy having a flying competition on my stomach, I knew that it is yours truly. Hey babe, dad just went to bed, so don't make tea for him. He said, biting my earlobe. I let out a moan and cursed myself for doing that especially in front of Nellie. I honestly don't know what's wrong with this guy showing me affection like this tonight. What are you guys talking about? Hmm. Nellie wants to apply for college. I answered facing him. Oh, I didn't know you want to go to college, Nellie. Uh, uh. She looked down again and didn't say anything. She just wants to try her luck on business or teaching. I answered for her. Hmm. Those are nice choices. Riley answered taking the tea set that I placed on the counter and made tea for the both of us. Thanked. Thank you, so, she said stuttering. One thing I have noticed about the maids except for Henry and Esther is that they always stutter when addressing Riley. But it's not only them even the waiter tonight was stuttering that I ended up ordering for him and let the waiter address me not my intimidating husband. Chapter 17 Riley POV. Last night was the best night of my life. I finally had the courage to kiss my feisty wife not once but twice and I also had the opportunity to steal another one before we left our bedroom. When she ran away from dad and me saying that she is going to make tea, she took longer than I thought, and once I was done telling dad how our dinner with the Thompson went we waited for Kate with tea but dad opted on going to bed and I went to the kitchen and found her having a conversation with one of the housemaid. Kate never wants them to assist her with anything in the house. She actually just asked them to show her where everything is put and she will just do it by herself. Why you two are dressed like you going out? Mom asked us. We are currently having breakfast. Hmm. We actually are going out. Vanessa and Max are going to look for few churches that will be suitable for their wedding. Kate answered my mom and continued eating her mushrooms. That's wonderful. Do book for yourselves too once you get there. Mom, I thought we agreed that we letting the anniversary pass before we can talk about having our wedding celebration. I glared at her and she just rolled her eyes at me. It still doesn't hurt for you guys to check out venues and churches now, Riley. Her voice was on a duh tone. The table was quiet again. You two were ravishing last night. Aqua said sending winks at Kate and my beautiful wife just blushed. Thank you, baby Aqua. My wife picked last night's outfits. I gave Kate the wink also and looked at my baby sister. Once breakfast was done Kate moved to the kitchen and washed the dishes and I decided to think about last night's heated moment in our bedroom. Flashback Hmm. Nellie please remind me on Sunday night to check for you on Monday if the university has anything okay? Kate said taking her last sip of her tea and standing up to go and wash the cup. Yes, ma'am, Nellie said smiling brightly at Kate. And if I don't find anything at campus? I will ask Terrence if they have anything at his campus. Who's Terrence? I asked her getting off my chair. He's a friend I made at the workshop. She answered like there was nothing wrong with that and I couldn't help but feel jealous. I would go to bed now. Thank you, madam, Kate, and sir.
I gave her a nod and she left after my wife wished her good night. I can't believe we stayed for two hours Kate explained to Nellie which courses and what credit score she needs most for university entrance. We walked to our bedroom while I was still fuming with jealousy and my wife still oblivious to it or maybe she is not. She just chooses to ignore my dilemma. As soon as we got inside our bedroom, I turned her around pulling her towards me. I pressed my forehead to hers. I grabbed her chin lightly as if touching a baby's delicate skin. I then ran my thumb over her lips. She opened her lips lightly and was about to bite the lower lip when I crashed them with mine. I have kissed so many women before but this goes beyond. I have never felt greedy and seeking for more just from a simple kiss before. But this woman in my arms at this very moment makes me feel all emotions at once but the one that is overpowering now is hunger, not for food but for her touch and her lips. I pushed her against the wall, deepening the kiss my hands moved from her cheeks while the other one went to her waist and the other one on her throat. She moans out my name, making me press myself more to her. Her moan and the way she was responding to my kisses intoxicated my whole being. My heartbeat raced along with my heavy breathing I moved from her lips and kissed her jawline and was about to kiss her neck when she pushed me lightly. Riley, we, ah, uh, fuck, stop. Her moans in between her words fueled me to kiss her and nip her neck. Riley. Oh. My. Baby, say you mine and I will stop, I said still nipping her neck. I felt her gulp and nodded her head. I don't want to nod my love. Answer me. I continued torturing her weak spot. I'm yours, Riley. I smirked and moved away and looked at her now red face. Fuck you, beautiful. She looked down too shy to look at me. And flashback. Hey, I am done. We can go before Nessa starts calling me. Kate said the moment she walked inside the living room. Yeah, let's go. I said taking my phone from the coffee table. We'll see you guys later. I told mom and dad and they both nodded. Finally, I am going to be alone in the car with her. Even though we normally quiet and don't talk much, but I actually enjoy her presence. Knowing that she is next to me that's all that matters. And this is one of the reasons I prefer to take her to work and from work. Vanessa and Max are driving to St. Vincent Delaware Paul Catholic Church right now. Kate said while looking at her phone typing something again. Okay love? I answered her and focus on the road. Kate POV I still feel flashed every minute I think of what happened between Riley and me last night. My stomach didn't only have butterflies that time but it also had bubbles popping one after another by just the kisses he gave me and how he was way too dominant for me. I think the moment I said I am his. I knew that those words will change us forever. Right now we were driving to church to meet with my friends and Riley intertwined our hands together and he keeps on caressing the back of my hand with his thumb. This gesture alone is driving me insane. So babe, I was thinking that we could convince mom by month end to let us move out. What? Why would you do that? I was hoping that we can move to our house now. She did say that we can stay with them for a month remember? He said tightening his hand on mine. But, I enjoy staying with your parents. I know, that's why I want us to move. He looked at me and focused back on the road. Well since your reasoning is invalid then I do not support you on that. I took my hand away from his and folded them. Okay fine, we will stay with them. Now please give me your hand. He glared at me and I took his hand in mine. You do know that I can still have my way with you even at that house, right? His face this time around had a smug. As for my precious treasure, it had its own mind together with my abdomen. Damn. Riley let out a chuckle and parked the car in front of the church and just about then Max parked his car also. Hallelujah! We thank the heavens for Mr. Fox. Someone is early for the first time in forever. Vanessa said the moment Max opened her door. I rolled my eyes and took Riley's hand and walked to them. For your information, I woke him up not the other way round. I hugged her and I was about to hug Max when I was pulled from behind. Possessive aren't we fox? Max said with a smirk. 
you have no idea, Richards. Riley replied and pulled me more to him. This is all I ever wanted Father God someone that will feel threatened and become possessive over me. Well, since you had lunch with mine yesterday, don't you think it's only fair that I hug yours? To Mississippi and that's it more than that I am taking your soon-to-be wife on a date again. Riley said with a grin. Fine, you win. I will handshake my soul sister. Max said defeated. The guy doesn't want to be far from Vanessa at all. He is beyond possessive and only V can tame him. Nessa, I thought your future mother-in-law will be here today. What happened? Decided to change the topic seeing that we will be here forever. Oh, she decided to opt out on this date, but we'll be joining when we go for cake tasting. I just nodded and we walked inside the church. And what about your wedding planner? Waiting for us inside. We all walked inside with the guys behind us talking about something that I wasn't paying attention to. I haven't been to church since I was back at home, which was three months ago and I feel so guilty. Especially when I do the Holy Trinity. A petite lady with ash brown hair cat walked our way with a priest right behind her. I saw her looking Riley's way and her smile grew bigger. Let this girl not to fuck with me or I will redecorate her I don't care if I am at church. We'll just go to confession and all will be forgiven and forgotten. Miss Odell. What the fuck? Vanessa never let anyone call her by her last name. What did this stick do to my best friend? I looked at Vanessa and she just gave me a wink and looked the other way. This is Father Tom. Father Tom this is the bride, Vanessa Odell and her fiancé Maximus Richards. The wedding planner said pointing at Max her eyes glued at Riley. Vanessa looked at the woman and cleared her throat. Stacy, this is my best friend Dr. Catherine Brown Fox and her husband Mr. Riley Fox. She emphasized on Brown Fox and her husband. Okay, we definitely have a story here. Vanessa and Max handshake with Father Tom and he looked shocked looking at me and Riley. It's a long story Father Tom. I will explain some other time. Riley said shaking Father Tom's hand. I have all the time in the world, my child. How did you get married without me initiating the wedding? Ah, uh, so they know each other. Vanessa was very pleased with the church and decided not to look for any other Catholic church, but settle for this one. Once the wedding planner left, I asked her. Wanna tell me about Meatless Barbie? She laughed at the name I gave her wedding planner. I see she also got under your skin flirting with your husband. She did not. Yeah, and you didn't keep Riley next to your curve at all times. She snorts. Fine, she did. She was fucking eye raping what I should be eye raping Nessa. What did you want me to do? You know how I get when I get too attached and especially after what happened last night, I don't think I can go back. I raised my hands in defeat. A creepy smile formed on Vanessa's face and I just knew that I spilled the beans that I swore not to spill. Did you finally do it? Are you finally and officially a woman like us? Fuck no and remove that smug scary look from your face. The woman laughed out loud and jumped up and down like a five-year-old kid about to get ice cream way past her bedtime. Tell me and I promise you I will let it be. She smiled and pouted. Fine. Fine, we kissed and it was amazing. Remember how I told you I want to feel spark and butterflies? She squealed and nodded like a crazy person. You feel them with him, aren't you? Yes, yes, I do and more. Last night he made me say that I am his and guess what did I say? I looked at her and she was like a kid listening to a fairy story. Tell me you said you are his, please, so that we can finally double date. Yes. Yes, I did. And if he screwed with me, it's on you. Woman. On me? She pointed at herself with a shocked look. Yes. You this is all your idea that I do all these things and act this whole role. When my judgment day comes, you better bail me out. Woman. She laughed and shook her head. Oh, relax, kitty. No one will behead you. And I will make sure of it and your brother will never let anyone touch you. I just nodded and decided to let it go. Chapter 19 
Kate POV. Things between Riley and I are going great just right after we had our double date dinner with Nessa and Max. He asked. No, not asked, but begged me to give our marriage a chance and we decided to get to know each other with our titles. Even though we argued about my double barrel surname, he wanted me to be Dr. Catherine Fox, and that's where I went all crazy and refused a brown estays or no deal. Didn't talk to him the whole day and didn't give him his goodnight kiss even though he did give mine. The only one that pissed him off was when he dropped me off at campus and I still refused to kiss him. Henry wasn't the one driving that day it was him. I was about to open the door when he just started the car and started driving away from campus. The guy took me to his office as we walked into the reception every eyes were on us or rather yet on me since I am not an employee here. We got into the elevator, Riley why am I here? You know I have to be in class by 9am right? He just looked ahead and didn't answer me. The lift dinged at his floor he then took my hand and we got out of the elevator together. His PA was a bit taken back seeing us but recovered quickly and composed herself. Good morning, Mr. Fox, and ma'am. She gave us her signature smile. I just nodded towards her with my own smile also. Good morning, Bella. Hold my calls, will you? Yes, sir. He opened his office door and made me get in. I was about to walk in further when he pulled me and pinned me on his wall next to the main door. Not cool, dude. I have to go to work. The minute I finished saying those words, he took my lips into his and kissed me with so much hunger. I tried to push him away, but he didn't budge at all ended up giving in and kissed him back. That wasn't bad now is it love? He said with a raspy voice I came to love so much. I shook my head and he put his forehead into mine and smiled at me. Wanna kiss me again without fighting it or? He put his head into the crook of my neck. Or what? I asked, not liking his or. Or you will spend the whole day with me here and attend every meeting with me. He looked at me with mischief's eyes. I pulled him to me and started to kiss him like my life deepened on it. Monday was the funniest morning ever. Today I cancelled my classes wanting to have an extra day and a self-made long weekend. But once Riley found out that I don't have classes he made plans, and those plans involve me and him in his jet and going only where God and he knows. I tried asking him when he told me to pack our bags for a weekend away last night, but the guy didn't crack at all my pout, didn't even work. That time my uncle and brothers always given every time I pull it. The pilot announced that we are about to land at our destination in an hour and Riley just gave me his perfect toothy grin. Where are we going Riley please tell me? I begged again for the hundredth times since we aboard the plane. We got out of the plane and I recognized my surroundings immediately. I am home. I sighed and looked at the guy behind me and his grin is practically wide as the Atlantic Ocean. Love my surprise baby? He asked as soon as we were on the ground. Not even one bit buddy. What? Don't you want me to meet your mother? I didn't answer him and just got in the black SUV in front of me. I took the driver's seat and let him take the passenger's seat. Guy looked a bit upset because of my behavior. Babe, it's not that I don't want you to meet my mom. It's just that you took me by surprise, that's all. I understand. But Kate, when I said I want to go all in, I meant it, every word, but if you don't want this, I understand. He said with a voice that is a bit disappointed. Okay, then, let me take you to my childhood. I drove us home and we got there just under 45 minutes and there in front of my naked eyes is my home. Ready? I asked Riley as soon as I pulled over. Yeah. What about you? Man, I am Dr. Catherine Brown. I was born ready. We both laughed and he got off his side and ran to mine and opened the door for me. I rang the bell and waited for a bit. Mom. Must be sleeping, and I was interrupted by a door opening and there stood my mom in her glory. Kitty? Hey, mom. She crushed me into a bone-crushing hug. Oh, my little baby is home. Woman, I am not a baby anymore. I retorted and she just tightened her hold on me. Once we pulled away she looked at Riley. Wow, this must be the hunk that sweeps you away. 
Hello, Mrs. Brown. Riley extended his hand for a shake, but my mom being my mom, she hugged him. Oh, please, son, call me Karen or better yet, mom. I take it there no need for me to do the introduction at all since you two took care of that. They both laughed at what I said. Please come in, you guys must be tired and hungry. Mom said as soon as she made a way for us to get inside the house. I haven't made dinner yet, so just go upstairs and freshen up and rest. I bet once you guys are refreshed dinner will be ready. Thanks mom, I will come down to help you in a minute. She smiled at me and shoo me towards the stairs. I opened the door to my bedroom and let Riley walk in first.